So check this out, we're at this beautiful new location. It's just one of my favorite spots here because it's vibrant and honestly it's a little bit more quiet than most of the other plazas here in Guanajuato. Here in a late afternoon, sort of just before sunset, the light is changing rapidly and I come across a scene that I think is absolutely beautiful. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now I introduced one element into the scene which is my friend over here who just was willing enough to model for us and I think it really makes such a big difference. And anytime you have the opportunity to have friends and family be introduced to your photography and a little bit more engaged in what you're passionate about, it gets the whole family involved and they tend to absolutely love it. We have this gorgeous door, actually we have several gorgeous doors right behind this tree and this whole plaza is really just in such gorgeous light right now. So while this light is changing so fast, I'm gonna go ahead and grab his photo, and I think this is gonna work perfectly right about here. It's such a beautiful shot, but here's the problem. Our subject is not the brightest thing in this image. It's the floor, and that floor is incredibly distracting. Now immediately that might not be obvious to you, but as a photographer, we need to thoroughly understand how the eye works. We need to understand how the viewers are going to perceive or view our images. So here's how it works. The viewer's eyes are going to go to the brightest part of the frame every single time. Now if there's a subject in the frame, such as a person, the viewer's eyes are gonna to go to that subject every single time too. So we do have something that's working for us here. We have clearly a subject who's a person in the frame. Here's the problem though, that's not the brightest part of the image. So there's some things that we can control while we're in a scene and there's some things that we can't control. The thing that we can't control here is the direction of the light. That's what we're gonna do now. And I really think once you get this, it's gonna make a big difference in your photography. So here's our shot that we just took here. And it's already a pretty good shot, but we can do a lot better. So with this image loaded up in my Photos app, I'm gonna go ahead and click the Share button on the right here. I'm gonna click Next on the top right, and I'm gonna share this to one of my favorite apps, Adobe Lightroom. If I click on that LR icon there, that stands for Lightroom, it's gonna say either got it or launch Lightroom now. So if I click that button, it's gonna launch me into Lightroom, which is exactly what I want to do. Now whatever folder you're in last in Lightroom is a folder it's going to bring up the next time you launch it. I'm typically always in recently added. The reason is because it's gonna show me the last image that I brought in, which is why we see this image here at the very top. If I click on this image here now, I have this image brought into Lightroom and now it's ready to edit we're going to go ahead and add what's called a local adjustment. Now a global adjustment versus a local adjustment. A global adjustment is one that affects the entire image. I don't want to affect the entire image, I only want to affect a part of the image, which is why I'm going to make a local adjustment. If I click on this icon in the top right here, that's gonna bring up this blue icon. I'm gonna go ahead and click that icon the one I'm looking for is the gradient. That's gonna allow me to draw a gradient on this image, allowing me to adjust just a specific part of this image. With my pointer finger, I'm gonna click and drag from the bottom up and simply create a gradient at the bottom, just like that. I don't want that to be so bright. I want to darken down that bottom part of the image. With my mask, all I have to do is click on that first icon on the right-hand side that looks like a sun. If I click on that, I can take that very first slider, my exposure slider, and drag that down. And I'll take a look at that. It's something small, but man, is this gonna make a big difference. Let me show you what I mean. If I click that checkbox on the bottom right hand side, and then I just tap and hold and let go, you're gonna see what a difference that makes. That's the beauty of editing. It's something that the viewer never knows what you did, and if you're subtle enough about it, and if you can hide it enough, it just looks like a good image. Now it's not fully finished yet, but it's a really good start. If we want the eye to go to our model, we still have a little bit more work to do. So here's my next move. Again, I'm gonna choose my selective edit. I'm gonna click on the top right hand corner here, and then I'm gonna click on that plus icon. If I click on this one here, all I have to do with my pointer finger again is simply click and drag on the screen and when I do that, I'm gonna create an elliptical. Now with that elliptical, I can grab any corner and I'm simply going to drag it into this position here. Now if I wanted to, I can take these tiny little circles on either side of this 
make it taller or kind of thinner, or just make it wider, just like that. So what I'm doing is creating a region of light right in the middle of the frame. But here's the thing, I actually don't want to correct it in the way it is now. I don't want to actually make it brighter. What I want to do is take this region and affect everything outside of this region. Here's how I do that. All the way on the left hand side here, you're going to see a bunch of icons. Right above that trash can, there's like a circle that's split in half, sort of looks like a diagonal black and white cookie. Now if I click on that, you're going to see that red outline which basically tells you this is the area that's being affected, that's reversed. That means that it's affecting everything outside of this area. Now with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and click on that same exposure slider that I did earlier, that one on the top right that looks like a sun. And with that slider, I'm going to take the exposure and drag that down just like this. Now if I click that checkbox on the bottom right here, I'm going to go ahead and tap on this image and let go. And now you're starting to see what I'm doing, right? Now you're starting to see the way I'm shaping light in the editing suite to draw the viewer's eyes where I want the viewer's eyes to go. I'm going to go ahead and click on those local adjustments one more time. And then I'm going to click on that plus. I'm going to go ahead and click on that same icon I did earlier. And now I'm going to drag a circle, a little bit of an ellipse, and I just want to affect this specific area of the photo. I want to brighten it up just a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. I'm going to click on that exposure icon on the top here. And now I'm going to take that same exposure. I'm going to drag it to the right this time. And when I do, you're going to see it just gets a little bit brighter. Now there's one last little secret when it comes to this image. I know if I make whatever part of the image or brightest part of the image, the viewer's eyes are going to go there. I also know whatever I make as the warmest part of the image, the viewer's eyes are going to go there too. So I'm going to go ahead with the same selection made. I'm going to click just below that sun. That's my color temperature. And now I'm going to make this just slightly warmer by dragging that first slider that says temperature and drag that to the right, making that just a touch warmer. It almost looks like I put a spotlight right on my subject. Now think about this. If you're in a crowded theater just before the performance starts, the house lights are on, everyone's talking, but then the second the lights turn down and that spotlight goes right to the subject, that performer on the stage, everyone gets quiet. And guess what? Every single person in that room is looking at the exact same thing. Why is that? Because there's nothing else to look at. They're the brightest thing in that room. Same thing here. Let me show you what I mean. If I click that checkbox on the bottom right, now if I tap and hold, there's my before and there's my after. There's my before and there's my after. Now there's one last thing here that just bothers me a touch and that's that the left hand side of that tree is getting just a little bit too much light. Now it's what's called motivated light. In the video industry, it's light that makes sense. Basically a lamp that's in the scene or a sunlight casting a shadow in the scene. We have motivated light here. It actually looks like there's a light beam all the way from the left kind of dragging or scraping across the scene to be a spotlight on my subject. But that tree is just a little bit, little bit too bright. So one last edit I'm going to make to really sell this edit. Click on the icon on the top right. Click on that plus icon to bring up my options. Click on that elliptical. And now I'm going to drag a circle around this part of the tree. And I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. Click on that sun on the top right. Except this time I'm going to take the highlight slider just two down from the exposure and drag that to the left. And I might as well grab that exposure slider too and darken that down just a touch. I still want that to be a little bit brighter because it makes sense. It's motivated light. I just don't want it to be so bright that it's a distraction. I'm going to go ahead again and click on the checkbox on the bottom right hand side here. And now my edit is finished. It's one of those things that you wouldn't think is immediately obvious until you see the before shot. Now you really know what it means to direct the viewer's eye. This isn't something that happens just by dragging sliders and hoping to make the image better. We're capturing with intention as well as editing with intention. This video was a free preview of my Capture It All online course. 
In this course, you'll discover how to use your iPhone to literally capture everything that's happening around you. We'll talk about composition, storytelling, timing, photographing people, recording videos, time lapses, flying a drone, and so much more. If you'd like to use your iPhone to its fullest potential, please take a look at the full version of Capture It All. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.